This is another video for Donna Kate. Okay, first of all, in terms of the communication, uh, I definitely zero in on disagreements. Um, people sometimes get the wrong idea, so let me make sure that I, I clarify this. Um, if I've said that you're wrong or minimize some view of yours, or unfortunately perhaps characterize you as believing that humans have a special role and they don't really have... I understand that, and I actually kind of mentioned this, that I don't get a general idea that you hold a fundamental view, but that, that humans are, are special in some way, that they're not just animals, but still I see the remnants of that kind of thinking in the kinds of distinctions you want to make, so I just want to talk about that. But it is out of respect for your thinking process, the way you think, you know, nothing to, uh, nothing to like, criticize any of that, all right? Um, so in this uh, comment, Donna Kate has clarified he doesn't think there's any fundamental specialness of humans. And I think there's simply some ramifications to that, and it sort of shows how a latent belief like this, once you've given up the explicit uh, belief in it, you still have these latent assumptions. All your categories and stuff can be based on the idea that there's this specialness, when really the specialness is incidental. If there is anything unique to humans, and there is, obviously, every animal has something unique, it's still potentially something another animal could develop. You know, another ape could develop, or another rat could develop, or develop into an ape and then develop. You know, these, it's still the potential everywhere. There's not going to be something special that somehow only humans could do. It's just impossible. It would require a god, and that's why someone as intelligent as you will abandon that. And all I'm doing is drawing some of the things you said and the fact that you did bring up these as examples to try to illustrate your point. Um... But I enjoy the conversation. I think it's very uh, illuminative, and I, I, I don't know what I acknowledge the part where you are conciliatory or you're trying to point out, hey, actually, we mostly agree. I, I know that we do mostly agree. But when you mostly agree, you get to up the resolution. You get to up the resolution until you find the disagreement. And so I love to take that opportunity. And sometimes I'm hardest on the people that bring up the best questions. Because a lot of time, I, um, I'm talking about basics and things that I pretty much decided. You know, not that I'm totally right. I'm glad other people are, are you know, are representing for their different views, you know, in case I'm wrong. But, you know, I'm a mortal being, and there's certain things in this epistemology, this is the way I'm running it. This is the way I'm doing my epistemology. It would be pretty difficult, I can see, to overturn that because it's the way I overturn other ideas, you know, so you have to, you have to commit sometimes, and even in an imperfect world where you can never commit to the perfect thing. So I'm pretty much committed to my ontology and stuff, and I love going on, as a matter of fact, I think I'm going to make a video about a couple things that I've been paying attention to lately, you know, the kinds of things that I actually spend my time directly thinking about, it's separate from what I can make videos about, because if I just talk without all this backlog of videos, kind of setting up a baseline, I mean, basically, the way I see it is, I have a lot of things I believe, and for me to keep talking about them gets kind of repetitive for me, because I'm like, no, but it's this, oh wait, yeah, but it's still this, it's this. And the point is almost to get all of you as bored with that part of my thinking as I am. Whether you agree or not, you finally understand, yes, we get it, Piero, this is what you think. And then I could go on, and when then I talk about these high level or whatever ordinary events in the world that have all these interesting components to me, and people can maybe get why it is. Um, and um, the questions that you raise on what thinking means are in that category. This is the kind of question I actually wrestle with in the sense that I, I don't know the answer. I think we know so little about will. What kinds of physical uh, laws might, you know, contribute to will? We just have so little about this thing that defines life versus death to us. The most important of our distinctions, arguably. And we know so little about it in any technical or, you know, material sense. And so it's fascinating. So, um, so I like being able to, to, to make my version of the distinction. And if I'm playing off what you say, and in the process you get misrepresented a little bit, or, or, or perhaps you admit you misrepresented yourself a little bit, whatever, that stuff was all under the, the, um, the category of miscommunication in the service of communication. I think we both made some really interesting clarifications and points in this. So, uh, By the way, I'm not endorsing your view that, oh, it must be over now, we pretty much played it out. I don't think so. I think there's a million categories. 
And again, if I seem like a stone wall sometimes, I'm not. I want to be more inviting, but it'll have to be, you know, back and forth. Because when I'm in the moment of thinking the ideas, I might just say, that can't be. Your idea is wrong. You know, really, I also think that, well, it's good somebody can see how it can be because I know I'm not right in everything. I want people to represent all the other, other views. Um, and if I could have confirmed in you uh, the a dedication to not relying on distinctions between humankind and other animal kind and to realize that any time someone says animals don't do this thing, that we are an animal, we do it, and therefore it gets done. And then don't make the, the easy out of going, oh, wait, 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 when I said animals, I meant animals besides humans. Because that's what we're looking for in material, in material philosophy, is principles that don't have those kinds of exceptions. Okay, They can be relative to a context that's different than saying, except for blah, blah, blah. You know, I before you, except for, that's not a very analytic rule. I before you, except for, that's, that's, those exceptions are killers in analytics. We want ideas that, yes, they can be relative to a context, you know, but if that's not except for, that's in, you know, it's like, this is true in this case. That's different than except for this case, very different. So, anyway, I hope that uh, made some sort of sense. And, um, and I guess for, for now, we, we are just agreeing because we agreed on that part. But you might want to think about why that came up, why you brought up the animals, why why I was so adamant about the animals, and then what impact would it have on your thinking to consider that animals might have philosophical thoughts and just not be able to write them down? Because remember, half of your brain doesn't know how to speak. Okay, it can draw, but it cannot speak. So, you know, it's unable to have, can it have philosophical thoughts? I mean, hell yeah, right? Or no? So, you know, your ruling on the nonverbal animals is your ruling on the nonverbal brain. And remember, there's a lot of ways to express yourself. And if you can express yourself, that means you had an idea. So since there's ways to express yourself besides language, there's ways to have ideas besides language. And in my belief, they can be arbitrarily sophisticated. So an animal might evolve a very sophisticated ontology, all without the ability to express it consciously and, and study ontology as a, as a, as a logic a logosocal, you know, study. But it still would have that ontology, very sophisticated ontology. And that's the funny thing about biology is often we find ontology in systems that take into account very subtle effects, like a plant leaf using quantum mechanics. It doesn't have to understand quantum mechanics in the way we mean when we say the word understand. But it has to be able to practice it, you know. And that's the thing, trial and error and empiricism in this style of life it leads to successful practice where understanding was unsuccessful and that's that's the funny thing because you do have an understanding but it can be misinterpretation but it just all works out so that the you know A's add up to the you know with the right terms and it just all happens to work out at a certain level of approximation so anyway that's a nine minute video where did I make a bunch of points or no points at all no. you decide cheers Filter.